Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Welcome me back, welcome y'all back. In this video, we're just gonna do a quick, quick question. Question. Catch up. <laughs> I think that was question and catch that I was trying to combine. We're gonna do a quick catch up and talk about where have I been. Okay, so ah, you guys know I normally come out with a video almost every other day. About two to three times a week consistently and sometimes even more often than that. Well, I haven't put out a video since. Let's check the archives and see. April 16th. That feels like forever ago. April 16th. So where have I been? Honestly, I've been kind of right here. Kind of here. Here, Miami, Virginia Beach, those sort of things. But basically, there has been a lot going on in my life. Um, All is well, all is well. But I think that with so much that was going on, I was just feeling overwhelmed and just tired. Tired. I did not feel like making a video. I did not feel like editing a video. So let's talk about it. So the first thing that had happened was my great aunt had passed away. This is my grandmother's sister, so it was the last of her siblings, and she passed away, and we went to her home going. And of course, that was hard because, again, this was um, with my grandmother. Um, altogether, there were eight kids, and so now my grandmother is the last surviving sibling. And so that just takes a toll on everybody and everything and then about two weeks after my aunt Alice passed away my grandmother fell and she broke her hip so that was hard too and of course you know went down there and was there as much as I could be being that I'm long distance and that is hard because whenever all of these things are happening in your family you just wish you could be closer to be um, more moral support and things like that and so I wasn't able to be but Jay and I were we were able to go down there and vacation vacation in Virginia Beach to see my grandmother spend time with her she was in a hospital for about seven to nine days she was in the hospital for a minute because she had the surgery but they had to keep giving her blood transfusions all is well she's home right now she's recovering and again we're taking it one day at a time for her she's taking it one day at a time because hip replacement she ended up having to have her hip a partial hip replacement um that's just a, a road to recovery and i think what made it even harder was the fact that she's still grieving her sister so, you know, you're grieving your sister and then on top of that, this happens to you and it just takes a lot of emotional, never mind the physical, emotional adjusting. And so that had me down. Um, I don't really create when I'm down. I don't, I'm not inspired to create. I'm not inspired to do much of anything. And so that was that. And then um, on top of that, my sister Tisha, a lot of you guys know, we talked about this before. I showed you clips where she wasn't able to walk. Well, she's not able to walk again. And this time it's worse than before. She's in more pain. And, you know, we're just, I'm praying. We're just praying. She's going back and forth to doctors. We don't know what's wrong. And so, of course, they're suggesting surgery. But... Yeah, before she was like laying on the floor and that was able to give her some relief. Now, not even laying on the floor is giving her relief. And it's just so sad because my sister is so freaking sweet. She does not complain. Like even if you called her right now and talked to her on the phone, you wouldn't even know nothing was wrong. Because her voice still sounds chipper and happy and everything. But I know this is so freaking hard. This is so freaking hard. And not that anybody deserves it, but she definitely doesn't deserve it. And just... Again, hard being so far away, not able to be there to be more of a help, more of service, um, and just not wanting people to suffer, you know? So that's what's happening. And then some good things happen as well. I just got back from Miami. We went down to Miami to celebrate my um, Jay, his cousin's getting married and so we went to their wedding and that was awesome i caught the 
Okay, Jay caught the little, what is that, the garter belt thing. So that was exciting. That was cool. And then I came back to Virginia and I delivered a baby. Okay, I didn't deliver a baby, but I was there to film the delivery of a baby, guys. My friend Gwen, her daughter, also my friend, my sister. <laughs> no, Gwen's like, you're her auntie, whatever. She had her second child and she asked me if I can film it. And I was so freaking honored because now during COVID, she was only allowed to have three people in the room for her first birth. I've also filmed that. I'm going to link that video if you guys haven't seen it. I think it's just so beautiful, um, the first video. So for her first birth, she had like 20 million trillion people in the room. So this time she can only have three. And I was just so honored that she actually asked me to be one of the three. So it was me, it was Gwen, and it was her um, baby daddy, her her boyfriend, her partner, Shamarki. And so that was so cool. And I just also think what was so cool about that was her due date was May 1st, the same day as the wedding. And at first I was saying to Jay, like, oh my goodness, I can't go to the wedding. I have to deliver a baby. <laughs> and Jay's like, but you knew, you know, you was invited to the wedding and like two years ago, this wedding was being planned. And of course, you know, it takes nine months to make and brew a baby. And so it was like, you signed up for the wedding before you signed up for the baby. So my greatest hope was that I was able to be, my greatest hope was that I was going to be able to do both. So I went to Miami. I gave them instructions that, yo, if she starts to feel like she's going into labor, give me a call. I'll hop on a plane. I don't even know if that would have worked. I don't think that would have worked. So anyways, went to Miami around the end of April, April 28th, got back like May 3rd. And so she still hadn't had the baby. So I was like, yay. And then yesterday, guys, yesterday, May 5th, Cinco de Mayo, she went into labor. She started having contractions around 4.45 in the morning. They caught me at 5.30 in the morning. And this was awesome because this was before work, right? And so I met them at the birthing center. And by 7.10, 7.10. So see, I wouldn't have had time to get on the whole plane. By 7.10, she had a whole entire baby. She pushed for seven minutes. She was at the birthing center for 45 minutes. And then that baby came out. Um... I'm going to be producing a video for that as well. So you guys will see that experience. And I'm going to, I'm, I'm going to have to do two drafts of it. Because one is going to be more personal. You know, we got body parts and whatnot. And then the other one will be made for TV for you all to see. But that was such a freaking honor. Such a freaking honor. So again, we have these, 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 these low moments, you know, with the mishaps and the accidents and the things like that that happen um and then we have these high moments we have weddings we have new beginnings and we have birth and then yesterday my sister they had to call an ambulance to take my sister to the hospital with her back um again all is well she's back home now all is well and we are just in prayer that we can link up that the right doctors the right medical professions the right medical professionals are put in her way are put in her path to find some awesome answers to whatever is going on with her we are asking for healing we are asking for joy we are asking for understanding we are asking for just the knowledge and the connection of the right people at the right places at the right time we don't necessarily want surgery we want an easier path. We want the path of least resistance. We want complete healing and we believe in complete healing and all of that. So I just want you guys to know that all is well. But like I said, it all have been taken a toll on me where I just wasn't inspired to be creative i wasn't inspired to pick up a camera i wasn't inspired to edit a video i wasn't inspired to do any of those things but we getting our mojo back guys we getting our mojo back um as far as m the money let's talk about the money a little bit um i am 
I just want to streamline my life. I want a really simple life. I've always wanted a simple life. I don't want a whole bunch of stuff. So with that being said, I'm not, I'm no longer going to do the Monopoly Savings Challenge. Um, just because for me, it's just not necessary. It's just not necessary. I'm a saver and I've always told you guys and I've actually give the advice to guys that I believe in one pot. I don't have to divvy out my cash. I don't have to divvy out my things. It's like, hey, this is my savings. This is my savings funds right here. Whatever I need, I can pull from that. So I don't need to have all of these sinking funds and separate emergency funds and separate what are they called? I guess they're called separate funds to do things. Just throw it all in one pot. So I'm going to go back to that. Just throw all my money in one pot and not making it any more complicated than it has to be. Now, I do believe if savings is not your natural inclination, the saving games, the saving challenges, they're super fun. They're super motivating. And you can find a great community of people who are doing the same thing as you, like playing the same games, having the same savings goals, doing the same challenges. And it's so awesome to have accountability partners when that just ain't your thing. But as for me, it's my thing. So it's not necessarily needed. So I'm no longer going to do it anymore. Also, I am going to refinance my house for two reasons. One reason is because, again, refinancing my house is going to save me about $225 a month, right, on my mortgage. And all I'm going to do is still put that money back into my mortgage, but now instead of what would have been going to what would have been going to interest before now gets to go to principal. So we're going to do that. Plus, I kind of... I don't need the money. I don't need the money as far as like um, skipping a month's mortgage and things like that. It's not that I need the money. What it is is I got some other things that I'm doing. And I'm not going to share too much about it just yet. It'll come out later. But I'm not going to share too much about it just yet. So with that being said, I'm also going to start conservatively paying extra on my home. The last time we talked, I know a lot of you don't remember. Some of you may not have even seen the video. But on my last April video for my April budget, I talked about sending an additional $8,000 to my mortgage. I'm not doing that. I'm not sending the $8,000 to my mortgage. I'm only going to send $1,000 to my mortgage extra. Um, and I'm going to put that extra $8,000 in my savings account. Because right now I need to stockpile money. I need to stockpile money for a few reasons. I just feel like I have some changes that are about to come up that I'm going to probably need some cash for. Also, I need to stockpile money because I just told you guys about my family and about some um hardships that they're in between my grandmother and her hip surgery and then my sister and her back issues and that means that she's not able to work as much as she was working before so she may need some financial help and I just want to be in a position that I can freely give financial help and paying off a house it's a great stretch goal for me. It's a great goal. It's a great goal and this obviously this house is going to be paid off one day but it's not a priority. It is not something that is the end all be all that I have to have to have to do. It's something that I got to do or I get to do because I want to do. But right now I just feel the calling. I just feel the need to just set my money in my savings account right now. And because I'm putting the money in my savings, the money's not going very far. I still get to at the end of the year or when all of this stuff settles down, I still get to put that money toward my mortgage at a later date. So I'm going to say right now, hmm, anything over 50000 Yeah, $50,000 in my savings. And that's probably even too much. But right now, let's say 50000 At the end of the year or when all of this stuff settles down and shakes out, Anything over $50,000, I'm going to send to my mortgage, right? Or it might be $40,000. I don't know. That is the plan. That is the update. That's where I have been for, it's only been a good two weeks. Okay, maybe three weeks. Maybe going on three weeks. 
it ain't been that long but it feels like it's been forever i miss you guys i miss you guys comments i really appreciate you all for rocking with me i appreciate all of you who have still been watching videos and leaving comments who have been going back re-watching throwback videos thank you all so freaking much um here's the healing everybody here's the healing